All right, so the second presentation is by Vicky Wilson. Uh, Vicky Wilson is from NatSend's Scottish office, ScotSend, um, and she will be talking to us about the, uh, uh, the Scottish Health Survey. There's lots of exciting developments on it over the past couple of years. Um, lots of potential for analysis. Uh, Vicky is a research director who works on Scottish Health and has been with NatSend for the past five, five years. Excellent. Over to you. Good morning. Um, oh, yeah, you can definitely hear me. That's good to hear. Um, thanks very much for um, taking the time to listen to the presentation today. Um, so, as Mari has said, um, there are two areas I'm going to focus on um, today. One is um, recent developments in the Scottish Health Survey or SHES content. We love an acronym at uh, Natsen Scotsen. Um, so, things. Um, to do with current and planned changes to the survey content. Um, and the second area of my presentation is looking at data linkage um, and the potential for expanded analysis of the Scottish Health Survey due to some developments in, in data linkage. So just a very brief overview of the Scottish Health Survey in case anybody's not familiar with it. Um, and this is very brief, but I'm happy to answer questions um, later if anyone has them. Um, so SHES is a national survey about the health and lifestyles of people in Scotland. It's commissioned by the Scottish Government um, and it is a survey that includes both adults and children. Um, and the SHES really, it looks at a lot of things but there are four key areas that the data is used for. So one is to estimate the uh, prevalence of particular health conditions, so particularly things like cardiovascular disease. Um, for example, to analyse the prevalence of certain risk factors like lifestyle behaviours um, over time, um, to compare regions and subgroups of the population, and also to monitor trends in uh, the population's health. Um, so it's been going since um, 1995, um, every year since 2008. So that is quite a long time series that we now have to be able to look at this data. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about survey content developments that have either recently taken place or will be taking place um, in the near future. Um, so the most recent contract for the Scottish Health Survey um, covers 2024 to 2026. Um, and obviously the period before that offered an opportunity for the Scottish Government um, to review the content of the survey, but also to put that out to... Um, User, other users and other interested parties to see what they might like to see on the survey. Um, you'll be pleased to hear, I think, that I'm not planning to read out or talk about every single one of these, um, but this was just to highlight a range, uh, sorry, the range of types of topics that people are interested in, um, either adding to the survey or knowing more about. So this came from um, 37 responses across public bodies, Scottish Government, charities and also academia. Um, so there is a um, method behind the madness of the colour scheme. So anything in pink is something that is being implemented. Um, and in a lot of cases, that is a sort of tweaking to or uh, amendments to the an existing module that we already ask about. Um, anything in grey was requested but hasn't been able to be incorporated at this time. Um, and there's just one uh, module that is um, being taken out of the survey. So looking at these over 2024 and 2025, so the 2024 survey is in field at present. Um, so that the field work for that was started in February this year and will go to December um, of 2024 with a little mop-up in um, January. Um, so a number of changes were implemented at this stage. Um, uh, one of the key ones was two new uh, brand new modules that haven't been included on the survey before. Um, one of these is to do with menopause and perimenopause, um, and the other is to do with eating behaviours. So that will feed into an eating disorder scale um, that will be analysed um, once 2024 is complete. Um, there are also some um, changes to questions around respiratory illnesses and cardiovascular disease, focusing on healthcare professional diagnoses. Um, and there are questions on exposure to um, 
vapor from e-cigarettes and vaping devices, which obviously has become much more uh, prevalent in, in society generally. Um, and for 2024, um, for the second time in shares, we're including the intake 24 dietary recall tool. So that's um, on shares, it's two um, recalls um, that we'll be including. For 2025, so we're currently in the process of drafting the questionnaire for that um, right now, um, there are a few changes planned. Um, probably the biggest one is to the physical activity section. So SHARES currently has quite a long and involved adult physical activity section. That will be replaced with the global physical activity questionnaire or GPAC questions and an additional one on muscle strengthening. Um, we're also putting uh, or featuring again the adverse childhood experiences or ACEs questions. They will also feature um, questions on emotional neglect and resilience, which we didn't include the last time that those questions were featured. Um, there's also um, some changes to a few other sections, so a revised um, list of, of drugs and the self-completion questions, and wants to do around stress at work, vitamins, and, and where people consume alcohol. Um, questions on discrimination and harassment are unfortunately um, being taken out of shares, which is a shame after our keynote presentation this morning, um, but that's because they're already asked in the Scottish Household Survey, so it was a bit of a balance of, of, kind of content and respondent burden um, going on there. Okay, so the second section here is around the um, additional data linkage, which is a fairly recent but um, quite exciting development on the Scottish Health Survey. Um, so what this means is that we have data from shares from 1998 to 2020. Um, now 2020 is just the first three months um, because of the pandemic, um, but that's now been linked to health record data and that is now available um, for application and for usage, and there will be more years added over time, so we'll be looking to add um, 2021 and 2022 as soon as possible. Um, so what this means is we now have this survey data which includes things like lifestyle behaviours, long-term conditions, mental well-being, and, and all, you know, a host of other things that are asked on the survey can now be linked to over um, 1,300 data variables. Um, so this is on topics on things such as hospital visits and length of stay, um, diagnosis and treatment um, for conditions such as cardiovascular disease and cancer, um, looking at mortality and cause of death, um, and also there are some variables around COVID-19 um, test results and vaccinations. Um, so the data was made publicly available in March of this year, so just a few months ago. Um, and there are already been some analysis applications received. Is this the one I can just ignore? Yeah, that wasn't five minutes, surely. Um, I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, so around um, minimum unit pricing, um, so that's something that is in operation in Scotland. Um, I feel like I should like, talk louder over it, but anyway. Um, analysis of dietary and lifestyle factors in relation to health outcomes. Um, investigations into short and long-term um, factors into uh, cancer of the colon and also gambling harms. Okay, so final slide um, for me before we have any questions is just really to talk about how to access the linked data. Um, so there are a couple of steps to this. Um, meant to be fairly smooth. The first is just to check the suitability of any study or proposed data use with um, the team at Public Health Scotland. Um, and this is just to make sure that you're not going through an application process when the data that's available isn't suitable for, for what you want to use it for. Um, after that, it's to complete a short application that is um, assessed by the data protection team at Public Health Scotland. Um, so this is likely to be as much as many people will need for their application. However, if you do want any additional linked variables that aren't available as standard or any shares variables that are not made available as standard, that will involve um, a privacy panel application as well. Um, so what I've done on this slide here and also at the end um, of the slides is include a link to where you can find out a bit more about that and also a search term that you can use there if, um, if you forget the link. Um, but I've also included on the very final slide links to bits of information, email addresses for more information as well. And these slides will be available on the website so you'll be able to access those later on as well. Um, 
so yeah, that was a bit of a whistle stop tour and a very quick um, overview. But uh, I guess yeah, I'm ready for any questions at this point.